Hello, this is Dazzling One, and this week's discussion is on epigenetics. Epigenetics is the study of changes in organisms caused by modification of gene expression rather than alteration of the genetic code itself. Epigenetics affects how genes are read by cells and how proteins are produced. So when you're looking at epigenetics, you're essentially looking at how environmental factors influence which genes are silenced through a process known as DNA methylation or which genes are activated. And a good group to examine when studying epigenetics are twins, particularly identical twins, because they share the same DNA. And when one twin develops a disease but the other does not, then they're able to look at the environmental factors that may have influenced one twin getting the disease but not the other. And you may wonder what type of environmental factors affect the epigenome, and one is what we eat. A large-scale study done known as EPIC that looked at the diets of people in 10 European countries found that individuals who had a diet low in folic acid had methylation of genes that made them susceptible to cancer, whereas those who had diets high in folic acid did not have those genes methylated and were more likely to develop stomach or neck cancer. And so they recommended that people eat cruciferous vegetables and leafy vegetables to help methylate those genes that would make one more susceptible to cancer. And you can read more about this study and from this article, I'll provide the link in the description box along with all the other articles that I'm pulling information from. Another factor that can influence epigenetics is where you live. And there was a study published in the Molecular Psychiatry Journal on the 24th of May of last year, and they found that children from impoverished families had methylation patterns near the SLC6A4 gene that's responsible for production of serotonin. And because this serotonin transporter protein was methylated, they had less serotonin available to the brain. And this is a condition linked to depression. So even psychologically and our emotions, epigenetics has a lot to do with it as well. Another factor that can affect your epigenome is who you interact with. And unfortunately, trauma does a lot of damage to the epigenome when it comes to silencing genes that may help us reduce stress or activating genes that create more stress. Even if you did not experience the trauma, sometimes they found that it could be passed down through generations. However, the good news is the University of Zurich conducted a study with male mice and they found that when they placed them in a more stable environment, the negative effects were reversed. So although trauma can lead to negative changes in the epigenome, it can also be reversed. So that leads me to emphasize that just be mindful of how you eat, how you drink, and the amount of exercise you get. Your sleep can influence your epigenome. Your experience is due, so make sure that you're in a healthy, stable environment. And I know for some of you that may be easier than others. So I guess what I want to leave you with is, as someone who believes in quote-unquote conspiracy theories, we look at concepts like chemtrails or predictive programming, to name a few, and these have negative influences on the general population. And my question is, do you think that these factors are influencing our epigenome? And I would say that they are, and I would say this is by design. But I just want your feedback on it, and I hope that you enjoyed this video and found it informative enough. Again, if you have any questions about this and you want a more in-depth look, I suggest you look at the description box and some of the links that I've provided down below. Have a wonderful week, take care, and God bless.